In this part, we're actually going to start making our tabs using something called Taz Studio. So we'll open up BizHawk again. Now, before I talk about Taz Studio, I need to talk about something called sync settings. So if we load up a ROM here, say Adventure Island again, you'll have this little menu in here, NES, and you've got lots and lots of settings here. You might be thinking like, I just want to start making my Taz. I'll deal with the settings later. But unfortunately, once you choose these settings and you start making your Taz, those settings are locked in for your whole Taz. So we need to make sure we get this right now. Now, usually by default, um, these things are set up how you would want them for making a Taz. But there are some situations where you need to be very careful when things can go very wrong for you. Um, an example of this is controller settings. And you want to make sure that you've got just like one controller plugged in, for example. Now, we do have one controller plugged in in this case, which is good as well. Now, I'll tell you a little story about a Taz that I made one time. This was the Taz of Crash Bandicoot 3 for the PlayStation 1. I had made that Taz without really touching the sync settings, and it had both controllers plugged in and both memory cards plugged in. Um, little did I know that having the extra controller and the memory cards caused a little bit more lag during the game, which made the Taz suboptimal. So I then had to redo the whole thing with just one controller and no memory cards plugged in. So that's an example of why it's really important to make sure you got these sync settings right. There are other settings, but you usually don't want to touch these too much. And depending on what console you're playing on, um, you may have different settings. So these are the master system settings and the sync settings are these. I'm just going to go ahead and turn off FM sound. That's just like a little Japanese sound chip on the Japanese consoles that makes it sound prettier, but it can cause more lag. We definitely want to use BIOS. Region auto, display type auto is fine. Controller type standard is fine. So uh, make sure you reboot. BizHawk when you do that. And now our sync settings should be all set up. So they save with BizHawk. You can also go ahead and set up your controllers if you want. So as I did last time, I set up my controls there and you can set up your hotkeys. You need a button for frame advance. I usually use V, but F is fine for frame advance. And this will just be, if you press the frame advance button, you can advance one frame at a time. So like super slow motion. You might want a key for turbo. I usually use space and that's pretty much it. You can have increased speed and decreased speed. We'll use that a bit, but we won't really use much else. Okay. So now that that's set up, we should be ready to actually start making our Taz. Now, as I mentioned last time, we're going to be Tazzing on a game called Castle of Illusion because this has a little practice mode. So if you boot up the game yourself, you'll see you've got practice and normal. This practice mode um, should be able to be completed in like one or two minutes. It's very short, and that's why we're making a task of this. You could already see that as we boot up our game, we're going to have to do a few things before gameplay. We're going to have to get through all the menus, and then we're going to have to actually play the game itself. So to start your Taz, there's a couple ways to do it. You could go file movie, record movie, but that's not a very good way to do it these days. The better way to do it is to go tools, Taz Studio. And that opens up this thing called Taz Studio, which is this nice little piano roll input viewer thing. Uh, so I'm going to just hit play and that's going to play down there. Play right through our BIOS screen. There's nothing you can really do on this. And you can even hit recording mode and then press buttons yourself. So I could play a little bit of the game here, get through the menu, talk to this dude. And then I could do a few jumps around here. If I turn off recording mode and I go back, you can see that Taz Studio will play back what I did. So I'm not actually pressing any keys here. It's just playing back the buttons that I pressed. So that's a very, uh, not the best way to enter your inputs. What you can do, suppose that I wanted not to jump here. So I press the two button to jump there. Suppose that I wanted to take out that jump. Well, I could actually just 
and click those inputs. And Mickey would not jump there. So that's the way we're going to be entering our inputs on Taz Studio. At this point, I would recommend you actually go through and play a bit of the game, just so that you get your head around what we're going to be doing in this Taz. Pretty much, you just run around as Mickey, you can jump and you can press the one button to ground pound. And you can keep going like this. There's treasures, there's enemies. There's a whole lot of good stuff in this game. And we get to the gem. This task is going to be three of these very short levels. And I basically just made a very, very bad Taz just then because I recorded all my inputs doing that and I could play it back. So get yourself familiar with Taz Studio. Try doing some recording of inputs, but also try editing your inputs in here. So if I want to jump a bit earlier, I can do that. And just get a feel for it. Once you got a feel for it, I would recommend doing a very rough Taz through this level and seeing how you go. Then we're going to go back and start optimizing it a bit more. Okay, that'll be it for this part. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next part.